Hey everyone, I know it's been a few weeks since the last tutorial, but guess what? We are back and we are going to talk about making this photo right here. Uh, I posted this on my Instagram a couple weeks ago and uh, people seem to dig it. And it's been something that I have wanted to do for a while, so I finally forced myself to kind of take this photo and I'm somewhat happy with the results. I mean, there's definitely some things that are wrong with it that I would fix in the future. But overall, not bad. Uh, most notably though, and something that uh, I should warn you if you decide to take on this project yourself, is make sure that down here you put your car into gear and you also um, disengage the emergency brake. Uh, numerous people um, definitely called me out on that in the comments. So. Um, that's something that you should definitely make sure you do. But let's talk about kind of what I was looking to do, how I set this up, and things like that before we jump into the edit. So I knew I wanted a night shot. I knew I wanted to make this kind of motion blur like the car is driving. You could definitely do this in camera. Um, two things that you would need though is you would need a steady way to mount your camera in the back seat of your car. And you'd also need to shoot at a slower shutter speed. So the slower shutter speed is going to give you that streaking motion blur of the lights. Um, unfortunately, I didn't really have a way to securely mount my camera in the back of my car to be able to do that. So the next best thing was to shoot in my garage. So this is kind of what the setup looks like before the Photoshop and before layering in that background photo. Um, some things that I did try to prep for in anticipation of this shot is I deliberately put my hand over the speedometer so I didn't have to worry about the needle and all of that good stuff. I'll show you how we dealt with the RPMs when we get in the edit. We're going to darken that down a little bit, kind of hide that so it doesn't bring the attention to it. But one thing that I was mindful of is I really wanted a lot of light kind of shining in through the windshield, I wanted to make sure it lit like my arm and my hands and the side of the face and like the seats here so it looked like oncoming headlights were shining in the car. I also needed to make sure I kept some detail in here so this just didn't go all to black. But on the other hand, I wanted all of this stuff in through here to be completely black. So I shot with a bare bulb strobe, just kind of blasted that into the front of the car, kind of like headlights would, would happen. So let's jump right into this and see what it's going to look like to get. Um, we're here in Photoshop. I just opened this photo from Lightroom. I actually, in full disclosure, this is the fourth time I have recorded this tutorial because um, Adobe Edition the first time decided not to record any of the audio and it wouldn't export it. Second time, QuickTime, which I used to record the screen grab, locked up. So we're on attempt number four. So if I'm a little brief, I apologize. I'm going to go through all the steps though. But keep in mind that this is now the fourth time that I've edited this image. So things might get a little bit quicker and I might talk a little bit faster. But I'll make sure that you get the gist and all of the kind of tips and tricks that I normally put in these videos. So um, we have our, let me delete these really fast. So when you open the image from Lightroom, you have your background layer here. What we're going to do is we're going to hit Command J to make a copy of that background layer. We're going to put that up on top. And then we're going to bring in our cityscape background. So what we're going to do is with our move tool selected, we're just going to click and drag, hold down shift and drop that right in the middle. You're probably going to get a lot of warnings that say it's the wrong size, all that good stuff. But then we're going to hit Command T to free transform this and we're going to scale it to about the size that we need. So we're going to hit Option and Shift and drag and that's going to constrain the proportions and also allow us to scale it from all sides. So once we have it about the right size, we'll go ahead and hit Enter to apply that. And then we're going to put that under our background copy to layer. So now what we want to do is we want to come in here and we're going to mask out the windshield 
with our pen tool. So the pen tool is the cleanest and most accurate, accurate way to make these selections. And I've done a few videos on using the pen tool, um, but essentially what you do is you just kind of click along what you want to mask out and you draw a shape all the way around it. Just click along. And I'm not going to bore you with making this selection, but essentially what you do is you will click along all the way around the windshield. And then when you get to the end, you will complete your shape. You will right click and you'll say make selection. You want to feather it by, you know, one or two pixels. Click OK. And then you'll come down here to this mask. Make sure you're on the right layer, of course. And click the mask tool. And then if you get that, you'll just come over here, click on this, and hit Command I. And then you can see that it makes a mask. Of course, you're going to draw it all the way around here. Like I said, we already recorded this tutorial multiple times. So I'm actually going to bring up this mask from the earlier one that I did just to save some time and some sanity on my part. So if you ever get in this situation and you have a mask that you want to copy to a new layer, here's something good that you can learn in addition to that. Is you can actually copy these, um, these layer masks and you can put them on other layers. So if we delete this layer mask, let's get rid of that layer mask. We'll just click delete. You can actually click on this one you can hold down Option, and you can drag that up, and it will make a copy of that layer mask and put it on that new one. So that's a good tip. All right, so now that we have that layer mask in place, and you can see that all of the letters and the windshield and everything is all masked, you can see we have some perspective issues to worry about. We look like we're driving like the Dodge Demon pointed completely up at the ceiling, which, you know, it's cool and might be a look that you're going for. I don't think it's something that we're looking for necessarily in this tutorial. So let's select our background layer. Let's click V and then we can start moving that up. Um, you can also drag and hold shift so we kind of stay in the right area. So now you can see that by pulling that maybe somewhere in there. It's probably pretty close to where we need it to be. So how did I get the effect that it shows it's moving? I'm gonna show you that now, but one thing that we wanna do first is we wanna come over here to this layer and we wanna right click and we wanna convert that to a smart object. So by converting it to a smart object, what that's gonna allow us to do it's going to allow us to go in and change those filters as many times as we need. Um, a lot of times if you go into Photoshop and you apply a filter, it's kind of locked, it's baked, you can't go in and you can't adjust it. You, you basically have to undo and then go back in and redo. And you may lose the settings, you may not lose the settings, but this is a much cleaner and much easier way to do it and I'll, I'll kind of show you why as we go into this. So we're going to go over to filter, we're going to click on blur, and we're going to go to a radial blur. Now radial blur sounds kind of um, counterintuitive. It's going to default to spin and we don't want that. I'm going to show you really fast what happens with spin. So you have a slider here that shows the amount. So we'll just click OK. So the spin blur is really used for things like maybe making your wheels look like they're spinning or propellers on planes or things like that. And while this looks cool, this isn't really the effect that we're going for. So you can see that we kind of have two problems that we need to rectify. First, we need to probably bring this up and over just a little bit. And instead of this tunnel look, we want the lights coming back this way. So here's where the power of that smart object comes in. We can come over here and we can double click on this radial blur. It brings us right back to where we were. 
and we can come in here, we can change this from spin to zoom, and maybe we want to increase the spin a little bit to 55. I don't know where I got that number. Maybe it was from the other four times, but it seemed to look pretty good. And then we want to just bring this up just slightly. So we'll go ahead and click OK, and let's see how that looks. So we're still a little bit off. I probably pushed that over and I didn't necessarily need to. So you can see how this kind of got a little wonky. So let's go back in there. Let's bring this back over. Actually, maybe down some. Mm, probably still needs to come over just a little bit. Okay, we really want to make sure that these lines are kind of directing straight into that central vanishing point. <clears throat> All right, and that one was the ticket. So you can see we have our nice um, vanishing point right here. We have the nice blur. If you wanted more or less blur, you could come in here and you could really crank that up. Let's see what that looks like. So, I mean, that's a little bit more. Let's run with that just for the sake of what we're doing. Um, I think the next thing that we want to do is we want to come in here and we want to darken kind of everything down. So I mentioned when we started out that I wanted it to look like this headlights were shining in here, but you can see up in here we have a lot of bright spaces. Down here is probably a little bit too bright. I think we can darken this area down and probably the color the toning needs to change a little bit so let's go in here come to our adjustments and let's make a curves layer so we're going to click on this middle point right here and we're just going to pull this down we want to darken it down quite a bit let me zoom in some and then what we're going to do is we're going to click on our layer mask here and we're going to click X to bring our black to our foreground color. And we're going to hit Option or Alt and Delete. That's going to fill that layer with black. And then we're going to go grab our brush tool. We want our brush to have zero hardness. We want to bring the size up quite a bit. And you can also do that with your left and right bracket tools. It will make it bigger and smaller. And let's bring our flow up and we're just going to come in here with white as our foreground color now. And we're just going to paint away some of this brightness on the headliner and maybe also in here. And then the back of the seat, down here on the bottom, maybe on my jeans in the back, back of the seat. And I think that might be pretty good. So I think that that looks good. So it looks like primarily the lighting's coming in from the front. Um, I think something else that I want to do is I want to come in here and I want to lower the flow a little bit. Probably make this brush smaller. I think it's really bright up in here. So let's try to bring this down. And maybe we'll make another adjustment layer. We'll make another curves layer. Let's make this one even a little bit darker. Again, we'll fill that with black. We'll grab our brush tool, hit X to paint in white, and we'll come in here and maybe we'll get rid of some of this super highlights that we have up here. I just felt like that mirror really, really popped off a lot. Um, and if that's too much, you can always change the opacity a little bit, or you can click back in here and you can mess with that curve. But I think that that's actually, I think that that's actually pretty good. The other thing that we can do is, if we don't like the color cast, you can come up here to your adjustments and Photoshop actually has some kind of handy photo filters built in. So if you click on the photo filter, 
This one's a warming, so if you were driving outside during the day, you could apply that. That would help bring kind of that sunlight feel to the skin in the top of the dash. If we are looking for a more cooler tone, you can do this. You can also bring this down so you can adjust the intensity. So I think let's go for a cooling filter. Let's bring down the intense or density a little bit, which will make it a little less intense. So let's do that. And I think that that's pretty good for a start. So let's commit to this. Let's hit Command, Option, Shift, and E to make a merge visible layer. And then let's go into our camera raw filters. And let's see if we can adjust this a little bit further. So I think first of all, if I think of the interior and kind of some of the finishes, I think that this will look good with some added clarity. So let's bump up our clarity a little bit. Um, maybe the contrast some too. I think to help bring out some of these lights and things, let's bring up the vibrance a little. I do think we're starting to get kind of bright in here. Let's see if pulling back the highlights helps some and maybe even pulling back the exposure a little. And now I think that some of the blue, maybe a little bit too much, and also it's starting to look kind of green. So I think we want to bring in some red and I like the overall exposure that that gave us up here. But down here, I think we're a little bit dark. I think we want to bring some attention to this. So let's go in here, make this a little bit bigger, and then let's bring up that exposure just a little bit. And then kind of coming over, we can look at sharpening sharpen this up a little bit we'll hold down our alt or option key on the mask and that will show us what we are sharpening we just really want to sharpen the edges and then there may be a little bit of noise let's just up these just a bit to kind of help take care of that the last thing that i want to do is come over here to the effects and let's put in some more vignetting I think that just helps sell that this was shot at night. You really have kind of everything leading into this center point here that's the brightest. Is let's come in here to the tack and let's darken that down just a little bit like the example image that we had. So let's just paint on here and then we'll just drop that exposure just to help not bring as much attention to it. So if we zoom out, I think overall that is pretty good. We'll go ahead and click OK. So here is before that camera raw adjustment and then after, before and after. I think it just helps sell that it's at night. If you don't like it or if it's too much, you can also just bring back the adjustment slider a little bit. Maybe we'll pick somewhere right in the middle, maybe like 50%. But all in all, I think that that's a, I mean, I think that that's a good stopping point. I basically wanted to show the process of how you create this kind of motion blur and then how you can use that mask and layer it in to a, a photo to kind of give that dramatic motion even though you weren't able to capture it in camera. So hopefully you learned something from this video. Hopefully you like it. Um, if you try this on your own and you post it on Instagram, make sure you tag me. I love seeing what people put together. And put your own spin on it. I, I dig that too. I mean, it doesn't have to necessarily be an interior shot. You can use this kind of in a bunch of different ways. So like I said, hopefully you like this video. If you do, appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed and you like the content, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm going to try to make these videos a more frequent thing. So until next time, take care.